a pleasant good morning to everyone. God bless you all and welcome to the Word is Working for Me broadcast. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for joining us from wherever you are joining from across the globe. Uh, in Africa, uh, we learned that we are, uh, we are on also in Turkey and Istanbul, India, Pakistan, uh, Anguilla, to all of the countries and to all of the peoples of those countries that are watching, good morning. And if you're in another time zone, good day to everyone. God bless you all. And thank you for joining the Word is Working for Me Network. We have this morning with us a powerful man of God, and we have not had enough of uh, what God has laid on his heart. Um, he has a whole treasure trove of knowledge and ins inspiration and understanding and wisdom for three lifetimes. <laughs> and we give God praise and thanks for what God has been doing in, in his life and for the download of the Holy Spirit and for his dedication to uh, bringing the word of God to us, for his dedication to, to taking time to study the word of God and to divide the word of truth so that when he brings it to us, it comes to us with a level of anointing and power so that we can understand the word of God. And so we give God praise and thanks for Apostle Colin Boom this morning. We thank him uh, for joining us. He's very, very busy, uh, but we give, give God thanks for him joining us this morning. Apostle, please go ahead and speak to us on the topic, on the thing that God has placed in your heart for us this morning. I'm going to begin, good morning, everybody. I'm going to begin by firing right off the bat. So here's the reason behind this message. God requires that we restore music to its fullest potential so that we can flow in full power. So we can put up there, Restore music to its fullest potential. God requires that we, we who, we his people, his kingdom citizens, that we restore music to its fullest potential so that we can flow in its power. And there's a reason for this. Let's get that adversary on board here. Satan fears our music. Satan is terrified of our music. The question is why? Number one, it reminds him of where he first dwelt in heaven as music minister, choir leader, and minister of arts. It reminds him of where he first dwelt. And secondly, God's presence is revealed among us when music is engaged, and he is driven back. God's presence is revealed among us. And secondly, he is driven back. We must restore music to its fullest power, to its fullest potential. And so we are going to need some biblical information as to what this entails, what this is all about, and how dare you get all up in my music. I don't like people to mess with my music. Well, get ready, because we're going to be all up in your Kool-Aid, and we do know your flavor. Let me give you my first point. My first point is all of us, irrespective of where we were born, the first thing that we heard was beats, music, rhythm. What are you talking about? Where, where are you getting this stuff from? But the first thing we heard were beats, music, rhythm. What, what, what is that about? How can you tell me what I first heard when I was being formed in my mother's womb. Well, when your ears got fully functional in your mother's womb, the first thing you heard were beats, heart beats. <laughs> gotcha. Now that I've got your full attention, and after that, all of the other songs and rhythm were being heard in the mother's stomach. I'm going to begin by reading a scripture from Ezekiel, chapter 28. 
Ezekiel chapter 28. And uh, verse number 13. Ezekiel 28 and 13. And I'll read on and then get into my, into my discourse. Thou hast been in the Eden of God, in the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. You were covered with precious stone. The sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the oinx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and the gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets, that's a musical instrument, and thy pipes, musical instrument, wind instrument, were prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. These instruments. And all of this precious stone was built into the body of Lucifer. Let me read that scripture again. Thou hast been in the Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the oinx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets, tabrets are musical instrument, and thy pipes, pipes are musical instrument, wind instrument. They were prepared in thee, inside of you, built into your body, in the day that thou was created. So he's a created being. He doesn't have eternity as an attribute. He had a start date when God made him. Thou art the anointed cherub. Now, in spite of all of the beautiful stones that God put on him, God gave him a definite anointing. That was the anointed cherub that covered it. Cover it what? Covered the throne of God. And I have set thee that thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire, brilliant stones all around the throne. That is why musicians don't dress ordinarily. They have to have the sequins and the light and the dazzle. That's and right. And all that other stuff. It, it, Satan knows where he came from and he's able to convey that message and all the brilliance and all the colors that heaven had. He is not an originator, he's the original photocopier. <laughs> <laughs> thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created. You were perfect until iniquity was found in you. He was harboring evil intention, iniquity. Mm. By the multitude of thy merchandise, thou hast filled the midst of thee with violence. And thou hast sinned, therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. He got proud. Mm -hmm. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. He got so bright that he thought, I'm brighter than God, and corrupted his brightness. I will cast thee to the ground and lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuary by the multitude of thy iniquity, by the iniquity of thy traffic. You're trafficking in the thing that I gave you. He's trafficking in music. Hmm. He's a music producer, and he uses music as his tools of trade and the thing that he sells and buys in the market, trading uh, superstardom for the souls of men. Give me your soul, I'll make you a superstar. He's trading. And I will bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. And then it goes on and on and on, describing Lucifer and his brilliance and his musicality and yaya re re. God wants to restore music to its original place of power. Having said that, now let me say something else. If what God says to you does not move you, nothing you say to God will move God. So if God says, I want y'all to restore music. Remember when we had that Africa Unite uh, thing? 
And look at what's happening now. I am shocked at how fast things have played out. You have to just step back and say, this is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our eye. It looked like an yeah. impossible dream that that can never happen. How can two apostles from God knows where start making declaration and then watch as things unfold and they unfold it so rapidly. You know, it's not you, but you're glad you had some little, a little grain of sand to throw into there to, to yes. add the work on. Yes, you're glad to be a participant. So what I'm saying now is, mm -hmm. if what God says to you does not move you, move you to what? Move you to action, move you to do something, move you to say something. If what God says to you does not move you, then nothing you say to God will move God. Okay. When his thing becomes important to you, your thing will automatically become important to him. He still wants back his bow. <laughs> Amen. Lord, he's, been, Amen. he's been giving us some big projects, I tell you. These are things that we know in ourselves we can't handle. And yet he's saying, that is what is important to me. And if what I say doesn't move you, nothing you say to me will move me. Mm -hmm. So get on with what I told you to do. And so here I go. Now, the reason that music is so important and it must be in the realm of God is that whatever you listen to, whatever you listen to imparts to you and or it lays hands on you. For instance, we are doing, the word is working, we are scripture, we're doing some good gospel music. And what is happening to you is the message is laying its hands on you and it's imparting to you. And a lot of people have grown, they have thrown aside a lot of junk. I get plenty of reports that people said to me, you know, Rev, back in the day when these things happened, I'd be in a funk of depression for weeks and weeks. Now I ask the devil, who do you think you're playing with? Who do you think you're playing <laughs> oh, with? No. I am not the same person that I used to be. I'm not going to be depressed. And they show him the door where to get off because yes. teachings have imparted to them. They have grown. They have become somebody that they were not. And so whatever you listen to is imparting to you. Therefore, when you're listening to music, you are receiving an impartation. When you're listening to music, whoever the singer, songwriter, musician, producer, whoever they are, what they're literally doing at that time of interaction when you listen to the music that they produce, they are laying their hands on you. They are imparting the essence of themselves to you. They are imparting their theology to you. They are imparting their philosophy to you. They are imparting their mind to you, their thoughts to you, their worldview. They are imparting it to you. Now you think that all you're doing is moving your feet rhythmically to the beat of the music and that nothing else is happening, but a transfer is happening. The very spirit and essence of the musician is being downloaded into your mainframe. You are receiving the spirit of the musician, the spirit of the producer, the spirit of the writer, the author of the song, the beat. You're receiving a download of that person's spirit. Now, here's, here's my point. Write this down. When I listen, I drink. See what? I drink by what I hear. Your ear is a gateway to your soul and spirit. Say what? Your ear is a gateway. It's an entry point into your soul and spirit. There is nothing innocent about music. You are drinking. You are being imparted to. Hands are being laid on you. And your gateway is wide open to receive the spirit and the essence of those who are the ones that created that music. All right, let me go even further. A song is a, is a, is a prophecy that is put to melody. What? A song is a prophecy that is put to melody. So when you're hearing a song, you are hearing the prophetic intention of the singer. <laughs> 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 oh, glory to God. A song is a prophecy that is put to melody. The musician is prophesying to you, prophesying to the world. 
saying what they want to see come to pass. Legalize it, yeah, yeah. Don't criticize it. That was Peter Tosh. He was singing, legalize the marijuana, legalize the herb, legalize it, and we will advertise it, legalize it, don't criticize it. He was declaring what he wanted to see happen in the world. Has his prophecy come to pass? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. A song is a prophecy that is put to melody. He didn't say, thus said the Lord. He just sang it into the airwaves. And the song resonated across the globe. So here's what you need to know. A song conveys the spirit of the singer, the spirit the essence, the very fabric and heart and soul of the singer. A song conveys, a song tells you of the spirit of the singer. Mm. Mm. And mm again. <laughs> Let me talk about Lucifer for a bit because he is the one that God used in terms of the music. Before man was created, music was created. Music is here before man. Before man was created on earth, music was created in heaven. Music is the one thing that man got from heaven. When he got it, however, music, it was corrupted and it was in its fallen state because when Lucifer fell, music fell. Fell from what? Fell from the intent that God had for it. That's why I'm saying that we need to restore it to its origin, to the reason why God created it. Lucifer was not just the musician, he was the musician and the music. When he walked around in the flaming stones in heaven, music emanated out of his being because the pipes and organs and tibrets and timbrels and tamarines, they were built into his body. So when he moved, he was a one man band. I mean, a one angel band. I mean, a one archangel band. The rhythm, the beats, was coming out of his body, but it was also coming out with a definite anointing, a supernatural. Now he was already given God quality skills in music. And on top of the skills, he is given a definite anointing, a supernatural help to flow in the music. So in the book of Ezekiel there that we read, Lucifer was the music minister. He was the minister of arts and entertainment. He was the music minister. He was the music. All came with him. When he came, music came. He didn't need a bass man to come with him or someone to play the treble or someone to beat the timbrel or the tambourine. He had it all in himself. He was an orchestra all by himself. Now, what I'm telling you now is not me making it up. We read it in the scripture just now. And I'm going to give you more scriptures as we progress in this subject matter. Lucifer, the music, the musician and worship leader, minister of music in heaven. He had instruments built into his body. And his job description allowed him to be close to the throne of God. His job description as music minister, as choir leader and choir director, it gave him nearness to the throne of God because he had to lead in the worship. And so Gabriel and Michael, the other two archangels, one in charge of war and one in charge of communication. So communication, war, and arts were the three things that God was big on. Communication, warfare, and the arts, music. And so he had closeness to the throne of God because of his job description. No other angelic being came as close to the throne 
as he did. His music gave him access. Only Michael and Gabriel came close to his position of authority and responsibility. He was positioned with authority and responsibility. Glory to God. Michael in charge of war, Gabriel in charge of communication, Lucifer, the music angel and minister of art. Now in Ezekiel 28 and verse 13, it says the workmanship of thy timbrels and pipes were prepared for you from the day you were created. The word workmanship there is the word interpreted service or another word used for it, ministry. Therefore, the workmanship of thy timbrels, timbrel, the service of your timbrel, the ministry of your timbrel. In other words, Lucifer was designed to serve to serve what? To serve up music and worship to God. That was his job. When God came, the waiter was Lucifer, and Lucifer was supposed to wait on God and bring him his music that he wanted. That was his job. He was to serve. He was not to use music for his advantage. He was not to use music even for dancing. He was to serve it to God as worship. The purpose of music, therefore, is to serve God to minister to God. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is if we are to restore it to its origin, we have to know what the origin is. And the origin is to the worship of God. A lot of what we call worship music and worship musicians and worship leaders, they're using the music. They say it is to worship, but really what it is, is to get them some fame. They're playing worship music, but it's not really to God. It is to get them some sales. So they do the worship to get the sales and to get their name bigger and bigger. And we call them worship leaders, but indeed and in fact, the worship is not going to God. It's going to their ego. It's going to their pocketbook. Ah, oh, glory to God. Come on now. He was to serve because he excelled in music and music was an actual part of him built into his body. You know, in Revelation, it tells us all things were created by him, God, and for him. For him. Music was created by God for God. What is music for? For God. For God. It is not for evangelism. You know, when we go out on these crusades, we have to make sure the music is tight and big and strong and we have our worship songs and we have our fast songs that get the people clapping and jumping and all that kind of stuff. Music was not really created for evangelism. It was not created to make us happy and make us dance. Now, these are byproducts of the music, but the real reason for music is for the purpose of God to get his worship. Lucifer was not only a musician. He was the instrument. He did not sit down at a guitar. He was the guitar. He was the guitar. He was the guitar and he was the keyboard and he was the tambourine. He could make the songs come out of his being by just moving. He knew what to do and had a definite skill and anointing in doing it. He was given a definite anointing for serving or ministering in music, according to Ezekiel 28, verse 14 to 16. He, Lucifer, led angelic worship as heaven's choir director, as heaven's worship leader, as heaven's music minister. This guy was a bad dude. He led the orchestra and was the entire orchestra. <laughs> now only God can do something like this. Build this guy with music all over him. And when God wanted an orchestra, it was one guy that stood up and he could produce all the song. Cabo Sandai. He led the orchestra and he was the entire orchestra. Music was designed to worship. To, for the worship of God. Any other use of it, therefore, and here's where we get our, our mandate from, any other use of music, therefore, 
is a violation of its purpose. When we are using music at the dance hall to shake our booty, uri, uri, and shake our leg and, and go short each about day, we are bringing music to a fallen state. It's a violation of its purpose. Music has no secular purpose. Music has zero secular purpose. Music was not created for any secular purpose at all. Music was from God, for God. Remember FUBU, for us, by us? Mm -hmm. Yes. Music is for God, by God, from God, for God. Now what we have done, and we have done it eloquently and brilliantly, we are allowing the music to live below its privileges, and we are not reaching a total spiritual fulfillment in terms of music. In Isaiah 14, 13 and 14, Lucifer had a throne. In Ezekiel 28, 16 and 17, Lucifer was cast out. Out of where? Out of heaven. In Isaiah 14, 12, Lucifer fell. So here is the point now. Here's the salient point. The fall of Lucifer was therefore the fall of music. The entire orchestra fell. The entire band fell. The music minister fell. The music leader fell. The, the worship leader fell. The one who led the angelic host in worship. He fell and music fell with him. Now understand this and understand it strong. God did not take away Lucifer's musical ability when he fell. He fell with the music on him, in him, built in. He took the music ministry with him. And for the first time in the history of God and man, music became secular and outside of the realm of God. In Isaiah 14 and 11, Isaiah the prophet says, Lucifer's music is warm infected. It's rotten. That's where worms come. Worms comes when things are rotten, when things are decaying. So the music that Lucifer now serves to humanity is decayed, rotten music. It's way below the reason for which it was designed. He said, your worms are eating you up now. Now you've got maggots. Maggots are worms that breed very rapidly. Worms, they are voracious and devouring. Therefore, what it's trying to tell us, what the prophet Isaiah is trying to tell us here, is that Lucifer's music has a false anointing. It is being used not to worship God, but to entice. And since he has, Lucifer has an insatiable appetite for recognition, for fame, for reverence and exaltation, music became a part of man's sin. We now use music for dance hall, for party, for the prom, for the concert, for the festival, for the club. None of it is for the honor and praise and glory of God. Lucifer was a music minister, but he wanted to be in charge of heaven. And he caused a split. You can call it a church split. <laughs> in Matthew 4, 8 and 9, we see him still wanting worship. I will give you my music ministry. I will make you a superstar if you worship me. He's talking to Jesus who made him and put the music and the pipes in him. Music exposes the heart and spirit of the musician. His spirit and attitude comes through the music and it comes into the heart of the listener. No wonder our youths are so rebellious because the music that is produced is rebellious music. Today, Satan used his most powerful weapon, music, not discouragement, music for God's sake. The thing that he can do best, he is using his most powerful weapon, the thing that he can do best, which is music, and has been doing since creation, using it with his false anointing to entice man. There are over 1,028 references of music in the Bible. God must consider music to be very important to refer to it over a thousand times. The Bible says the sons of God sang when he created the earth. Music was engaged at earth's creation. The Bible said at the rapture, 
the trumpet of the Lord shall sound. A musical instrument will be used at one of the most important events of Christianity, the rapture of the church. At the birth of Jesus, angels came and sang. Music was engaged at the birth of Messiah. In Psalms 100 and verse 2, God tells us how he wants to be approached. He says, come before my presence with singing. How? Come before my presence with singing. In other words, whenever you're going to pray, whenever you're going to come to God, whenever you're going to engage God, the thing that God wants to hear first and foremost is singing. You say, well, Rev, I'm not in the mood to sing. Sometimes when I come before God, I come with tears. You're out of order. You're out of line. And you're not approaching God in the manner that he wants to be approached. You're breaking heaven's protocol. You are rebelling and doing your own thing. You say, but what if I feel emotional and when I come to God, I'm, I'm hurting and and my heart is breaking, and I just got to cry. When all of that is said and done, God says, come before my presence with singing. Is God heartless and ruthless? No. He has set up the protocol, the manner in which he wants to be approached. You can get an audience with him when you come with your song on. What if I don't feel like singing? It has nothing to do with what you feel like doing. It is heaven's protocol of approach. Nobody gets in the presence of God who does not approach him with music, with singing? Are you telling me, Rev, all of my prayers are a precious waste of time? I'm not telling you anything. The Bible is telling you something. <laughs> Rev, you better step in here and say something. Say, say something and save my hide. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. What I, would say, what I would say is God will get what God wants. God will get what God wants. And many times uh, it is just the mercies and the grace of God that we get our prayer, prayers answered because we as people are stubborn and we overlook and go past the protocols and the principles that God has set. And we decide to do things our own way or however we were taught. But the word of God is pretty, is, is very clear and concise. Come before my presence with singing. And as a matter of fact, many of the battles that were won, God told them, go forth singing. Sound, the, 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 let the singers, especially that major battle with, um, what's his name? Uh, uh, Jehoshaphat. The king, Jehoshaphat. Yeah. They went ahead singing, and that was one of the biggest battles that, that, that Israel had won. And he caused a, a, a thousands, hundreds, and thousands of, of soldiers to begin to ambush themselves. Singing, worship, and even as you talk about that, I'm thinking of my own presence, my own, own experience right now, because I have been pounding heaven for a long time about something. And then I got up one morning uh, last week, I, or it could be this week, and, and I was about to pound again, and the Holy Spirit said to me, just worship me. And I thought about it and said, wow, I, I have not been doing enough of that. And as soon as I began to worship, bang, 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 the breakthrough started to come. He said, don't ask me for anything. He said, I already know what you want. <laughs> <laughs> you've told me a million times just worship me and I began to come into the presence I got a very very anointed worship singer to help me and you talk about the spirit of worship here and the spirit of the person oh my god anointed anointed as soon as you put on his music God himself just 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 blase himself is like yeah I like this I like this come worship me and I and the breakthroughs are just coming all week and I give God praise so I'm right in tune give God what he wants if he says come with worship come with praise come before me with music come in you want to cry you want to do whatever come with singing I'm singing and crying then. <laughs> so you can sing and cry. You can sing and cry. Right. <laughs> Very eloquent. <Here's> rescue. <laughs> <laughs> rescue, rescue number nine. You know, sometimes 
I get so animated in what I'm saying yeah. that I could get tone, but you got to have the right tone as well. So at that, that moment, I needed the right tone. And here <laughs> comes the law. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you very much. You're oh, welcome. Glory to God, man. Come before his presence with singing. God wants to be approached with music. Come singing. Singing makes him say, welcome. What can we do today? And so if, if and when you're going to approach God, get your song on. Mm -hmm. Don't come repenting, screaming, crying, complaining, murmuring, demanding, with your little gimme list. Come singing. Yes. In Psalm 95 and 2, it says, come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. <laughs> wow. Ooh. He's insisting. Come on. He's giving us a clue. He's, he's giving us a secret to approaching. He's telling us, if you want something from me, this is what I want from you. If you give me what I want, you will get what you come for. We don't give him what he wants, and we yet we want what we come for. Are you feeling a brother? Come he said, now. enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Enter with praise. Now the word praise, is a musical term. Praise is birthed in music. God wants to be where the personal vocal music and praise is. Say what? God wants to be where the praise is. If there ain't no praise, God doesn't want to be there. If you want to engage God, you got to come with songs of praise and music and snapping of the fingers and giving honor to God. In 1 Chronicles 6, 31 and 32, it says that these men were set over the service of song. Song is a service? Yes. Song is a service. When I sing, I serve. You know, we think of preaching and all that we're doing on this program here. We think of this as serving God. But song is considered by God to be service. When you're singing to him, you are serving him. What are you serving him? You're serving him his favorite dish. He eats up that stuff. Doesn't the Bible tell us God inhabits the praise of his people? It does that. But you know, we miss yeah. these things because we are so deep. We want to go into the Greek and Hebrew and the plain English is staring us in the face. These men in 1 Chronicles 6, 31 and 32 were a full-time staff. They were paid full time. They were paid from the tithes of the, of the tabernacle. They were given housing and property. And they were always on call to minister. So there were over, over 400 of them employed by David to do music alone. They were full-time, they were paid from the tithes, they were given housing and, and property, and they were always on call to minister. Whenever they were called, they had to have a new song, a fresh song, a different song. They couldn't sing the same old mm -hmm. thing over and over again. God doesn't like stale songs, he wants fresh. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing yeah. unto the Lord all the earth. He wants a new song. Now, what does new mean? Just that, new. He wants it extemporaneous. He wants you to make up a song as you come in his presence. Your own personal song, not some song you learned 15 years ago. He wants it fresh. He wants it new. He wants it extemporaneous. He wants it different. He wants it on spot. When he calls for a song, open your mouth and let the redeemed of the Lord sing so. Ah, uh, First Chronicles 9 and 33, Nehemiah 11, 22 and 23, Nehemiah 13 and 5. They were not to provide special music. They were to lead in worship and sing and make music to God, make up music to God. Why? Now, here are some things that music does. And we're going to have a lot of them, but I'm going to give you three of them for now. Music has the ability to break down barriers. Break down barriers. Music, secondly, 
has the ability to open our spirits. And thirdly, music has the ability to soften our hearts. Hmm. And then in 2 Kings 3, 15 and 16, music has the power to release prophetic ability. It has the power to release your prophetic ability. It sets the tone. Now, this is why we have to get the music right. Music is an atmosphere setter. And there are some atmospheres that God cannot, does not find conducive to his presence, so he wouldn't come. In other words, if you get the music right, then you get the atmosphere right. And if you get the atmosphere right, God will come. God can land. God can inhabit that, that space. A lot of our space is too funky for the presence of God. There's too much evil that goes on in this place. And so God cannot come. In 2 Kings 3, 15 and 16, the, the army was stuck. The waters were bitter. They had nothing to drink. They hadn't planned to be out so, so long. And they were about to die when they called for the prophet. And the prophet came and said, look, bring me a minstrel. I need music to set me in the right mood and the right mode so that I can quiet my spirit. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, rock a shucker, rock a shucker. I need a minstrel to come. And when the minstrel plays, my prophetic grace will activate. Music activates the prophetic. Oh, yes, yeah. Bring me a minstrel. And uh, when they got the minstrel, God moved upon Elisha when the music was being played. And he, he got a prophetic word that told them to make the valley full of ditches, dig ditches. There's not going to be any rain or any such stuff. But by the time you get done, <laughs> the valley will be full of water. The ditches will be full of water. But water, that which would quench their thirst, water, which is a reference to the word, was going to be given to them miraculously. But music had to be engaged first. The thirst was going to be quenched when the music was right. Oh, glory to God. God moved when music was engaged, when music was played. We know of Saul and David. Divine activity occurred when music was engaged. When you're playing the right music, you are engaging with the divine. You're engaging with God. God is coming to that place coming into that presence and flooding that place with his anointing. The wrong music will not invite God. And that's why we have got to know what kind of music is right so that we can get it right and engage the presence of God. In Psalm 96 and 1, it says, Sing unto the Lord all the earth. He wants a whole earth to sing for him, even the unsaved. What? God is demanding a song from everybody. <laughs> in psalm 147 verse 7 it says sing with thanksgiving in ephesians 5 18 and 19 paul to the church at ephesus he said when you come together let everyone have a psalm a hymn a spiritual song sing and make melody in your hearts unto the lord there are over 200 scriptures that tell us to sing why god must like music so, you know, Rev, I'm not very musical. Well, your father is, and you're a chip off the God's block, so you are musical. You've just been shutting it off because some demonic voice is in your ear. God requires us to re restore music to its fullest potential so that we can flow in its full power. Oh, yes. The longest book in the Bible is the psalm or the song. It is God's song book. The longest book in the Bible is the psalms or the songs, God, it is God's song book. And if God was going to allow the longest book to be a book about music, then music is important to God. Now, if music is important to God, 
you have got to make music important to you. And you've got to know what music God wants so that you can engage God. Now, you'll be shocked to know, but according to the scripture, God is a singer. Come on, Rev, you're lying now. You're lying now. Yes. You're lying now. Come on, Rev. Come on, man. Don't lie like that. So let me say it again real slow. Yahweh, El Elyon, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Makadishkem, Jehovah Sabaoth. He is a singer. In Zephaniah 3 and 17, you need to be writing that scripture down, y'all. In Zephaniah 3 and 17, he will joy over thee with singing. What? God will joy over us with singing. He will exalt over you with loud singing. Now notice, not just singing, loud singing. Not only does God like music, but God is a singer. Not only does God like singing, but he sings over his children. Not only does he sing over his children, but he sings loudly. What does that tell you? God wants his music, A, and B, God wants his music loud. <laughs> That's all those who say, you know, I like my music, Rev, but I like it soft. Well, I'm telling you how God likes it. He likes it loud. All right. Having said that, let me say also, Jesus is a singer. Ah, come on, man. All right, Zephaniah, he said, God joys over us. I can get that. Jesus is also a singer. Hebrews 2 and 12 refers to Jesus as the singer. Not only that, God the Father is a singer. God the Son is a singer. What about the Holy Spirit, Rev? I'm glad you asked. The Holy Spirit is the one who inspires the song. So he's a songwriter. Holy Spirit is a songwriter? Yes. Holy Spirit is an inspirer of songs? Yes. It is the Holy Spirit who's giving them the songs? Yes. Ephesians 5 and 19. It says with songs and hymns and spiritual songs. What does spiritual songs mean? Songs that are energized by the Holy Spirit. That's what spiritual songs are. And so in Zephaniah 3 and 17, God sings. In Hebrews 2 and 12, Jesus sings. In Ephesians 5 and 19, the Holy Spirit helps to create songs. He gives songs in the night. Old pneumaticos, songs, old pneumaticos. It's a Greek term. It means spiritual songs, old pneumaticos, spiritual songs, songs of the spirit, songs designed by the spirit, songs sent by the spirit. The Bible tells us he, the Holy Spirit, will give us songs in the night, in the yeah. dark hours of our soul, when we are going through the long, dark night of the soul, the Holy Spirit will come and give songs. I have never had a song given to me when I was in a happy mood. All of my songs came during painful time. And all of a sudden, I can hear the rhythm, the lyrics, the beat. I hear the song in my head. And if I reject that song, then an alternative song would come on the right side of my brain. Now I've got two songs, right side, left side. Whichever one I open my mouth and sing, all of what I need to finish that song is given. But it usually happens at very painful times. Music opens the door to the presence of God. Music opens the door to the divine presence of God. Music is a key to God's presence. Music is an entry point to God's presence. Music is an access way to God's presence. Music is a road. It's a street to God's presence. Oh, yes. Music is not to impress or to move people emotionally or to display the talent of the musician. Music is more than an admirable performance. According to Numbers 8, 5, 7, 9, 12, and 14. Numbers 8, verse 5, verse 7, verse 9, verse 12, and verse 14. In First Chronicles 9 and 33, in 1 Chronicles 9 and 33, the Lord said, 
the Levites shall be mine. Now, who are the Levites? They were the musical Levites. What is God doing? He's claiming the musicians as his own. He's saying, the musicians shall be mine to make music for my pleasure. He claims the musician as his own. You can take the rest of them, but I want the musician. They're mine. God is still after his music. That's why he designed a creature as an entire orchestra all by himself to get his music from out of Lucifer. And when Lucifer messed up, God did not change his plan. He still wants his music from somewhere. And we are the somewhere that he wants his music from. What an honor to have God looking for employees to work with him. Yeah. In 1 Chronicles 9 and 33, the Levites shall be mine. In 1 Chronicles 15 and 16, even their brothers or male relatives were to sing and play sacred music to God. If the musician had a brother, God wanted the musician to teach his brother to play so that his brother could play music unto God. If the musician had a cousin, God wanted him to teach his cousin how to play the instrument so that his cousin could play and sing sacred music unto God. Any blood relative of his that was male, God wanted the men involved in the music. 4,000 were employed to thank God. That's the term yada. What does yada mean? To throw up your hands in worship as you sing. Not just to sing, but to lift your hands high as you sing. 4,000 men employed to yada. And they were also to halal. They were to yada and halal. What does halal mean? Halal means to rave and boast about God to the point that you look like a maniac. <laughs> mm. They were to halal and yada. They were to yada and halal, to rave and boast of God to the point of looking like a madman. So whatever songs they were creating, the songs were to be full of boasts about God and his awesomeness. Oh, yes. They were to be musicians of his presence. Musicians of his presence. Not musicians of entertainment. Not musicians of the dance. You were not there to get your dance on. You were not there to get your flow on. You were musicians of his presence. In other words, the music was the throne upon which the presence of God was escorted. The musicians were to put God on their shoulder. They had the responsibility of putting God on their shoulder and escorting the presence of God to fill the whole congregation so that everybody could get a taste of God's presence. But the musicians were the carriers of his presence. Kabo Hey, 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 hey. They were musicians of his presence without the spirit. Spirit of God, your life and ministry has nothing to offer except mere words. But when anointed, great things happen. The music is dry and boring, but when the presence of God is engaged, when it is anointed, great things happen. In 1 Chronicles 15 and 26, the responsibility to carry the ark, which represented the presence of God, rested on the shoulders of the Levites. And God said, the Levites shall be mine. I want the musicians to be the ones that escort the ark which carries the presence of God. I want the musicians to be musicians of my presence, carriers of my presence. The musicians burden, as I close, the musicians burden is to escort the presence of God through their music. It is the musician's responsibility to carry the presence of God that sits on their shoulders, on the shoulders of the singers and the musicians, the players, as it did on the Levites. No one in the congregation should have more presence of God than the musicians, than the worship leaders and the drummers and the keyboard players. There should be people of his presence. Now, a lot of them don't know this. They think they're there to entertain. And they do that. They entertain. And our flesh responds to all the entertainment. And when we leave, we ask each other, how you enjoy the service? Did you enjoy the service? The service is not for your enjoyment. It is for God's enjoyment. 
I know I just hit a bad spot there again. Come on now. We're going to have to ball for some help just now. In 2 Chronicles 5, 12 to 14, the singers and musicians were in one, making one musical song. And when that happened, the power of God came on the place the sheep kind of came in and the priest could not stand up to minister. When? When the musicians and the singers were as one, when they were in unison, when they were in unity, when they were one, as they played, the glory, a glory cloud came in and took over the place and knocked the priest on the floor. When? When the musicians and the singers were one. You can't get unity in the music department for no reason. There's always somebody who has their instrument turned up louder because they want to be heard above the dim, above the song. They want their song to be the loudest one. Too many worship for their own pleasure. They don't ask what does God want. A common theme keeps the service from being disjointed or looking chaotic. What is the theme for today's music? What is the theme for today's message? Why do you want a theme? So that they can be in one. No musician should play or sing without first asking God's mind, God's will. It is not just nice music. Because music can be nice and yet it is not being used at its maximum potential. Talent does not break the yoke, but the anointing does. Great musical ability does not bring the glory, but unity and wanting the mind of God, that seemed to do it. Zechariah 4 and 6 crescendos by saying, it is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. God wants his music back. It seemed like I'm on a take back type of a assignment the last couple of months. That's what reformation is. Mashing things up, breaking things up, taking some things back and instituting some new things for the honor and praise and glory of God. The question to the listeners today is, what kind of music are you listening to? And is God pleased with it? Is it the music God wants or is it the music you like? Most of us, when we engage music, we engage the kind of music that we like, that we want, that tickles the flesh, that moves the hips, the lips, the fingertips. But we never ask, Lord, what do you want? And on the word is working for us today, we are going to challenge everybody and their grandmother. Have you noticed the kind of music that is played prior to us getting on here and yapping our gums? We try to find the best song, the best music. It is never about entertainment. It is about the presence of God, the power of God, the anointing of God, the glory of God, we want God to be glorified. We want to engage the presence and power of God because when God is riding on the service, healings are breaking out everywhere. Deliverance is breaking out everywhere. Provision is breaking out everywhere. And so our task, our assignment, our job is to invite, to invoke, and to enjoy the presence of God. This is a service of his presence. We are not trying to promote ourselves here. We are trying to promote Yahweh, the great one, because when he comes, the tempter's power is broken. When he comes, the tears are wiped away. He takes the gloom and fills our life with glory. And all is changed. When the singer, Yahweh, when the singer, Yeshua, when the singer, Holy Spirit, the songwriter, when they come and music is engaged, all of the power of heaven is at work in our midst. Over to you, Apostle. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Apostle. You spoke just now in something and it and the Holy Spirit just spoke to my heart. He is in the reclaiming business right now. He is in the 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 the, the recovery business of everything yep. Yep. that has been taken. Rainbow, music, arts, fashion, uh the preaching, the word of God. He is in the reclaiming business. And uh, we are going to see an overhauling of things and an overhauling of uh, a lot of the systems and, and a lot of the things that have been claimed and, and um, crowned by the world is theirs. There's going to be a reclaiming. And it's not going to happen just because, uh, you know, God gave a prophetic word. It's going to happen when people 
of God pick up that agenda and run yep. with it. And so the word is being sounded out right now because things, it, 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 it's as if um, everything has hit the fan, so to speak. Everything um, has hit the fan. So yes, it has hit the fan. <laughs> it has hit the fan. It, it gone real bad now, right? Because you have people who don't even know God and has no relationship with God. And they're producing music and sending that music out. And, and uh, people who don't have the, the, the foresight to know and, and do research and find out about these people and their background, they bring that music into their space, into their heart, into their lives. And they wonder what just hit me because the spirit of that person has come into their home and disrupting. Yeah, in the room. Disrupting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's in yes. the house. Yes. You know, I am so selfish at this moment because I've found someone who is anointed. And this person is on YouTube. And I said to myself, this time around, I'm not sharing this person with any and everybody. I'm just going to share to share this, this, this music that I found with people who I know, but they're serious. Yes, I will. Definitely. I'm volunteering. Oh, I know serious. As a guinea pig for music. Oh, powerful, powerful, powerful mm. music. And you talk about bringing a new song. This person is not into singing a whole lot of what is out there and putting out a record. It's a ministry of music. Legitimately, purely just minister, ministering to the people of God. And so I want to thank you for, for, for bringing up this thing because this thing, when it's done right, it, 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 it brings us into the presence and the power of God. And when it's done wrong, and I'm talking about in the body of Christ, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a disruptor. It breaks up people's lives. It destroys lives and we have to come back to the straight and narrow regarding our music so that the, the lives of the people in the body of Christ will be affected by the presence of God and not by the presence of darkness. So to all of you listening, to all of you music ministers around the world, may God continue to move in your heart all of the leaders, the Davids out there who are creating um, uh, music and, and music departments and bringing people into their music departments to, to, to enhance the music, so to speak. Remember, the music that you are creating is for the worship of God and not for the titillating of the flesh. So wherever you are, Begin to hone in, begin to bring that music back to its original position, back to its original place, which is to worship God. Thank you all for watching. Thank you, Apostle, for being here this morning. You brought a powerful, powerful word and a powerful rebuke and a reminder to the body of Christ as well, that the music that we sing and our worship should be unto God and not unto ourselves. Again, thanks for watching. God bless you. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye, everybody.